Good evening, everybody. Before we start the formal council meeting this evening, I would like to ask you to observe a one minute silence as respect for those who have passed on or are still seriously affected by the COVID pandemic, and also as a mark of our hope for the continuance of the recovery from COVID and a return to normality. And we start that minute now. Thank you. So welcome to this, the annual council meeting of WBC held on the 20th of May, 2021. I first need to read out some advisory points regarding how we have to conduct our council meetings. These points will already be known to existing and returning members, but will be new and useful to our newly elected members. They are important. <coughs> Please note that due to COVID restrictions in the council chamber, only a politically balanced group of members can attend the meeting in this evening. And it is only they who can vote on the items in the agenda. All other members have been invited to join the meeting via Teams. These members can take part in any discussions, but are not entitled to vote on any of the items. Could I please ask you to ensure that any mobile devices or mobile phones are switched off? If you are participating via Teams, when you are not speaking or being asked to speak, please mute your microphones. If you do not mute your microphone, it will be muted for you. To assist people viewing the meeting, could everyone participating via Teams turn off their cameras and only turn them on when speaking and could they also introduce themselves whenever they speak? To ensure the smooth running of the meeting, could members wishing to speak via Teams please use the hands up facility whenever possible? And please do not speak until asked to do so by myself or by the new mayor. Could those members in the chamber uh, please raise their hands whenever they wish to speak? Please note that the meeting is currently being webcast live. In order to make it easier for those watching the meeting, I am proposing the members do not stand when speaking. In this chamber, when you want to speak or are asked to vote or to draw attention to yourself, please do not stand up. If you do, then what we might see through the framed screen in front of you <coughs> or on the video and screen transmission is mostly your body, but possibly with no head. In the chamber, please remain seated and simply lift your hand clearly in the air and it will be seen by the mayor. If you are asked to speak, please press the black button on the microphone in front of you and that will draw the camera to your position. Then you can speak and of course be seen. But please remember to switch the microphone off again when you have finished speaking. I've already mentioned how those on Teams should use the hands-up facility and to remind you that this meeting is currently being webcast live. I'd now like to welcome the following new members to the Council and to congratulate them on their election. Sam Akhtar, Charville Ward. Anne Chadwick, Lodden Ward. Phil Cunnington, Norris Ward. Peter Dennis, Westcott Ward. 
Norman Jorgensen, Maiden Early Ward, Morag Malvern, Embrook Ward, Rebecca Margett, Finchamstead South Ward, Jackie Rance, Shinfield South Ward, Ian Shenton, Evans Ward, Shahid Yunis, Bullmersh and Whitegates Ward. I would also like to say goodbye and thank you to those members who retired at the recent elections, and that includes myself, and commiserate with those candidates who were not successful. So we now go on to agenda item 01, which is the election of the new WBC mayor. I now uh, get a chance to tell you something about my experience as the mayor this year and a councillor for the last nine years here. We will then follow the, um, the process for the normal meeting. So. I have been a Wokingham councillor for many years across both the Wokingham Town Council and on WBC. I have spent nine years at WBC. It was meant to be only eight years, but we were all kept in office for the extra year due to COVID and having no elections last year. In my time here, I have served on, I think, every different committee they hold, planning, licensing, all the scrutinies, climate emergency, obviously full council, and several others. I've learned a lot about every one of those subjects and it has proved to be most interesting and it showed me just how many services we as a council provide for our residents. I've also had the honour of being appointed to some executive roles, mainly in highways and transport and more recently to mayoral roles. Deputy Mayor of WBC last year and Mayor this year. For all those roles, I am indebted to Keith Baker, John Kaiser, all of these are councillors, Keith Baker, John Kaiser and John Halsall especially, for them having given me the opportunity here at the council. Of course, I also have respect for all my fellow councillors, whatever political party they may represent. We all have a part to play in serving our residents. Members make policy and decisions and the officers and staff then implement those policies and decisions. So I would like to thank all the officers that I have worked alongside and who have been of assistance to me over the years. In fact, I should like to thank all the people who are elected or who work within WBC, because collectively, we all provide a very broad and supportive system for our residents. At this point, it is customary for the outgoing mayor to provide flowers, and or a gift to a few people as thanks for their support. And I will be doing that. But for reasons of minimising contact and proximity, those things will need to take place outside of this council meeting, but they, they will happen. In terms of activity this year, just uh, briefly, obviously because of COVID, not a great deal was able to take place in terms of travelling out and meeting people, but uh, we always had the, the technology of Teams and Zoom uh, for the past year. It's been quite a challenge, of course, uh, running a complete council meeting through uh, Teams. Uh, most people on Teams and uh, Zoom have about 10 or 12 people at a time. We had over 64 minimum at every one of our meetings. So it was a challenge, but we came through it. And again, that was with the uh, contribution of my colleagues on the council who assisted me whenever it was necessary. In terms of the meetings I went out, uh, it seems I opened a number of roads and bridges. Um, they're still open. Uh, I also opened the Everyman Cinema and um, Starbucks and uh, restaurants and a couple of shops and a surgery and all sorts of things. Um, unfortunately, the cinema and the um, coffee shop and a couple of restaurants closed soon afterwards. And I hope that's not an omen, really. The roads are still open, which is a good point. In terms of the number of activities, looking back through the lists, I've seen that previous mayors and deputy mayors have about 150 up to 180 events a year between them. And of course, this year it was basically just me because no one was sending many invites in. So I did as many as we possibly could, and I did over 40 to 45 events. So I think I've done 
roughly 30% of what we we're expected to do. So I don't think that's too bad overall. It was very entertaining. One of the things I had to do was scramble up a ladder on a building site and screw a, a tile onto the top of a roof, which was something I've never had to do before, but it was uh, quite interesting. Uh, it's, it's a very interesting role to have played, and it's an interesting year for it to have happened. Uh, ups and downs in uh, flexibility and difficulty, but thoroughly enjoyable. I will certainly miss my involvement with Council. I will probably have withdrawal symptoms for a while, but I will look back on my Council activity with fondness and an experience that I have thoroughly enjoyed. Thank you. We now move on to the uh, agenda item number one on the on the usual sort of list, rather than my preamble, and that's the election of the mayor. Sorry, what was that? An interloper? I don't know. Okay, I shall try again. Uh, agenda item number one: election of mayor for the municipal year of 2021-2022. Does anyone have any nominations for the role of mayor? Yes, Councillor Hassel. Um, Keith Baker. Uh, uh, seconded by John Kaiser. OK, I was just going to ask you that, and now I've got both names. Thank you. Um, if you wish. Yes, I have a nomination. You have a nomination? Yes. yes. Um, uh, and do you have a Car seconder? Caroline Smith, seconded by Clive Jones. Thank you. And um, at this point, would uh, the proposers of Keith uh, Baker at least want to speak first? And then after that, for the seconder and the other uh, roles, I shall pass across to the chief executive, Susan Parsonage. But if uh, the proposer first of the first one would like to speak for up to um, a few minutes, and then the seconder, and then we'll do the same thing for the next person who's nominated. OK, so... Um, I, I'm proposing Keith Baker because he's won. Uh, there's a lo lot of feedback somehow. Uh, I'm proposing Keith Baker because uh, he is a long serving councillor, has been on the executive for many years. Uh, he was the leader of the council, and um, I think he will be a fine. Fine, Mayor. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, Mr. Mayor, I'd just like to reiterate what the leader has said and the reasons for why Councillor Baker should be considered for this role. Uh, thank you. Uh, I'd be very, I'm very pleased to nominate Caroline Smith from our group. She manages one of the charity shops in the centre of Wokingham and is well known. And I think she would do an excellent job as mayor and represent the whole of the borough. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Mayor. It gives me a great pleasure to second the nomination of Councillor Caroline Smith to be mayor of the borough. I've known Caroline for approaching 10 years. She's a local girl who has brought up her children in the borough. She is someone who enjoys a very close family with children, uh, her mother still alive, and her grandchildren. She went to Reading University to study sociology. And as Lindsay says, she's been the manager of a local charity shop in Wokingham Town Centre for many years. She's embedded in our local community and she knows our community really well. As the borough's first citizen, we need someone who has an unblemished character, who is trustworthy, someone who is fair and someone that residents of our borough can look to, to hold the office of mayor with integrity, with dignity, with authority and with honour. It requires someone who can remain calm, especially when our meetings get a little bit fractious, 
and someone who can demonstrate fairness and an, and an appreciation of the council's rules and customs, sticking to them when necessary, enforcing them without fear or favour. I believe that Caroline has all of the necessary qualities to be a fantastic mayor of our borough, and I'm proud to have been asked to second her nomination, and I hope very much that she will be selected this evening. Thank you. Let's help you with the microphone. On. Yes. Are there any further nominations? No. Okay. In that case, to conduct the vote, I will now pass across to the Chief Executive, Susan Parsonage. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. As we have two uh, nominations for Mayor, I will need to deal with each nomination in alphabetical order. So I will uh, say the nomination, and, and if members can indica indicate your support for each nominee in turn. So the first nominee is Keith Baker, Councillor Keith Baker. So if you can say, indicate your support, please. Thank you. Now for the second nominee, if you can indicate your support for Caroline Smith. So in, in terms of the, uh, the vote, the uh, result is that the mayor will be Keith Baker. So, if you'd like to stand up, please, uh, Councillor Baker, I will make my way across you and we will go to the other room.
Good evening, everyone. I'm going to read the declaration. I, Keith Baker, having been elected to the Office of Mayor of Workingham Borough Council, declare that I take the office upon myself and will duly and faithfully fulfill the duties of it according to the best of my judgment and ability. First of all, may I thank the council for electing me to this prestigious position. Being the first citizen of the borough is an amazing honour, which very few councillors actually achieve, and I am extremely humbled to become one of this small group. In many respects, I'm quite old fashioned in that I believe being mayor is something you earn through your contribution to public life and not simply because it's your turn. In my 15 years since I was elected by the fantastic residents of North Woodley, I've been privileged to occupy some of the most senior roles in the council, including being the leader, executive member for a combined highways and planning, and chairman of the overview and scrutiny management committee. Outside the borough council, I have also managed to squeeze in leader of the town council, governor at Addington School, and stage manager for Star Maker Youth Theatre Company for over a decade. In fact, my chosen charity combines two of these activities, namely special needs children and the performing arts. Chance to Dance is a local community interest company, which is a dance school for students and families in the disabled community. At this point, I would like to publicly thank my wife, Marilyn, who will become my mayoress, who has put up with my intense activities for such a long time. She has been absolutely fantastic and I cannot thank her too much for being there and supporting me throughout. For the last year, I have been deputy mayor to an amazing person, Malcolm Richards. His year in office has been absolutely unique because of the impact of the pandemic and he has coped with it magnificently. He has been a pioneer on holding virtual meetings and dealt with all the technical failings that were thrown at him, and I wish him well in his retirement. Normally, the incoming mayor would pass on a scrapbook of his year, or of the previous, mayor, the previous mayor's year in office, together with his past chairman's badge at this meeting. But the pandemic has provided a final twist to his year. Due to socially distancing, Rules, these two items will be given to Malcolm outside the meeting. I would also like to thank Malcolm's daughter, Christine, for acting as his mayoress during this pre period. Finally, as I take on the role of chairing this and subsequent meetings of the full council, can I make a few comments? I said before that I am quite old fashioned, and this extends to the neutrality of the mayor. I think this is a very important point and goes to the very core of the role. I would like to enter an informal contract between all councillors and myself. I will pledge to be even handed to all parties and all councillors. And in return, I expect all councillors, regardless of any affiliation, to behave in an appropriate manner. This includes things like keeping to the accepted time limits for speeches, questions and answers. It also includes cutting out the side comments by councillors who are not speaking. It includes making supplementary questions, real questions based on the answer given and not a statement or a speech. It includes making sure all councillors understand how a point of personal explanation and a point of order is defined in our constitution. 
Over the next three months, I wish to have individual meetings with the leaders of all parties to understand their views on council meetings. So thank you all once again, and let us move on to the next item in the agenda. The next item, agenda item two, is the appointment of the deputy mayor for the municipal year 2021-22. I will be uh, nominating, proposing, Councillor Abdul Lois. Can I ask if there's a seconder for that? Thank you, Councillor Kaiser. Um, since I've proposed, I will start off with my. Sorry. Yes, Councillor Ferris. Uh, I would um, like to propose Caroline Smith for deputy uh, mayor, and Prue will be seconding. Okay, thank you, uh, Councillor Ferris. And apologies for skipping on. So. Councillor Lloyds, let's get my notes. Councillor Lloyds, here we go. I've known Councillor Lloyds for uh, over 20 years and have no hesitation in proposing him for the role of Deputy Mayor for the coming year. He is one of the most dedicated councillors I have met and carries out his ward duties in a most diligent manner. He is very caring and considerate individual and creates a good rapport with his residents. He's always willing to help out in other Woodley wards if needed. And he is a key member of our Woodley team talking to residents throughout the year. I hope that councillors will agree with me and elect him as my deputy mayor tonight. Councillor Kaiser, would you like to uh, second it? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, Abdul, Councillor Abdul Lloyd is a fair minded colleague and friends. He works extremely hard for his community and I unnervingly um, re recommend him as Deputy Mayor. Thank you, Councillor Kaiser. Uh, Councillor Ferris, would you like to propose? Yes, I'm very happy to propose Caroline Smith. Um, I won't repeat what I just said, but um, one thing is that this post is uh, a neutral post and as the numbers of uh, councillors across the the border is na narrowing. I think we should consider whether there will be alternatives uh, to ruling group people being uh, nominated for these posts. So I I'm very happy to propose Caroline Smith. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Councillor Ferris. Um, I can't see if uh, Councillor Bray. Oh, sorry, there she is. Yes, I'm certainly here, Mr. Mayor. Congratulations on your um, elevation to First Citizens Wokeham. Um, before I second Caroline, can I say on behalf of the Liberal Democrats, thank you to Malcolm for his service um, uh, in a very difficult year um, and we'll miss him on the council. He, he's been a, a good colleague to work with. Um, I'm not going to go into a long spiel about Caroline. I'll just say what Clive said earlier um, is what I would say. Um, and Caroline, um, I commend her for this post. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Bray. I'll hand over to Susan to do the voting. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. So in terms of the appointment of Deputy Mayor, as we have two nominations, I will deal with the nominations in alphabetical order. And if you can uh, vote for your nominee. So if I can take the first nominee is uh, Abdul Lois. If you would uh, indicate your support for Abdul Lois, please. Thank you. And if you can indicate your support for Caroline Smith, please. Thank you. So following uh, that, that vote, then the, I declare that Councillor Abdul Lois is elected as Deputy Mayor of Wokingham for 21-22 municipal year. Thank you. 
I, Abdul Lois, have been elected to the Office of Deputy Mayor of Buckingham Borough Council, declare that I take the office upon myself and will duly and faithfully the duty of its accord, according to the best of my judgment and ability. Thank you, and good evening to all. I came to England in 1976, age eight. I have always considered England as my home, as much it is an honor and pleasure to have been elected to the role of deputy mayor here tonight. And if my parents were alive today, I know my parents would be very proud to see me here. My wife and I have brought up and educated our children in the borough. We have enjoyed a great life. I know it sounds like an advertising slogan, but Workingham really is a great place to live and work, and I want everybody who lives here to benefit from the great things on offer. The people of Workingham are very broad, and but, but are united in building a better wor world for all current and future generations to come with diversity and equal opportunities. To quote the Legatum Institute of UK Prosperity Index Report 2021, they say, Workingham is the most prosperous local authority in the UK, performing strongly in living conditions, health, enterprise conditions. If you love Workingham as much as I do, being proud of the achievement of the council, you will understand why I find such an honor standing here as I do today in my capacity as a deputy mayor. We are all well-founded council with high level of reserve and well-controlled finances. The borough well is low. Unemployment is the, is the healthiest place to live in the UK. It's a place where people want to come to live. In addition, we have level of unemployment homeless and no rough sleepers. With our excellent leisure facilities, a success story which we'll be building on when sadly other councils are closing facilities, reducing service to their resident. The borough offers great opportunity and diversity with other facilities such as park, countryside centers, including Dinton, California, all of which have proved to be invaluable to residents during the pandemic. Hopefully we see a rapid recovery of the economic activity across the borough and life will return to normal for residents as quickly as possible. Please rest, rest assured I will do everything in my power to support the mayor to enable him to re represent the borough in the best possible light so everybody can see that Workingham is a great place to work, live and bring up family. My consort will be my wife, Nina Chodri, and thank you all for electing me today. Thank you for the chance to serve the borough in this way. Thank you, Councillor Laws. So we now move on to agenda item three is apologies. Do we have any apologies? Yes, Mr. Mayor, we have one apology. That's Jenny Chang. Thank you. Uh, now moving on to agenda item four, which is the minutes on pages 13 to 40. Um, I'm seeking members' agreement to those minutes. All those in favour, please show. Okay. 
All those against? All those abstaining? Can I ask you to raise your hands a bit higher so that the counters can see it, please? Be proud of your vote. I can't see your head, that's a problem. <laughs> you don't want to. Okay. So the vote is such that the minutes have been agreed. Thank you. We're now moving on to any declarations of interest, please. There's one Councillor Kaiser. Yes, so Mr Mayor, I am the chairman of the holding company and we'll be talking about housing and obviously the housing companies form part of those companies. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Munro. The same for me, uh, Mr Mayor. And Councillor Ferris. I'm a non-executive director of London Homes Limited. OK. Oh, Councillor Smith. Uh, director of Holco. All right, no more. OK, thank you very much. So we now want to uh, agenda item six, the public question time. There is 30 minutes for this. I'm sure we will uh, get through the three uh, questions, but I will be quite strict on the 30 minutes um, limit. So can I remind everyone that your supplementary questions must relate either to the original question or the response that is given to that question, please. And executive members, you only have two minutes to respond to the question. So the first one uh, is from someone on Teams, uh, Rio Elms. Would you like to ask your question, please? Uh, yeah, thank you very much. As the pandemic has split us apart so much socially, there hasn't been enough done to try and aid young people aged 11 to 17 in terms of places to go and things to do. The council has not provided for young people to commune independently. As a result, young people have not have been socialising in places that were not intended to have any number of people. This can be exampled in the Woos Hill underpass, which has had several complaints from residents on social media about gatherings of young people before and during the pandemic. So the questions that I've put to the council today, in light of the things that I have stated today, what will you do to make a place for young people to gather in Wokingham? Okay, that's Councillor Bud. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, and congratulations on, on your becoming mayor. Rio, thank you very much indeed for the question. The pandemic has hit different people in different ways. For young people, the lockdowns and uh, restrictions groups, gatherings have been particularly difficult and it's been obviously impossible for us to provide places for them to con uh, commune independently. In fact, we have been expressly tasked with preventing such gatherings. As we emerge from the uh, pandemic, young people will be able to gather safely again, and we provide many places for them to do so, including the skate park in Wokingham, Town Centre, Burga in Finch Hampstead, and our numerous parks across the borough. Town and parish councils provide facilities as well. We also have recently elected youth member of parliament who will help us advise on what is needed uh, for the young people in the borough. In, in children's services, Walking in Borough Councils delivers targeted one-to-one -one family interventions uh, to teenagers throughout the, uh, the, uh, th through the early help provision. The integrated early help service are involved in the delivery of the Duke of Edinburgh Explorers Extreme programs, which offer par participants uh, opportunity to engage in constructive and positive activities and develop key skills. The Council's Youth Offending Services service works with teenagers and who've committed criminal offences and support is also uh, offered to the, those who are at risk of offending. The service is also involved in de uh, delivering programmes aimed at reducing violence, offending to larger groups of children in school settings. So, Mr Mayor, as we, as a caring authority, we provide a whole a vast range of services for our younger and older children within the borough. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Bath. Two minutes on the dot. Um, 
Uh, Mr. Elms, do you have a supplementary, please? I do. Thank you very much for your um, question, uh, return of that question. Um, seeing as the question has also been has been put to people who are violent and generally have been uh, disadvantaged people of a young age, it, there isn't being enough done to talk to the average person who is young. Uh, it seems to be asking the question to people who are generally, as I said, disadvantaged. Uh, why is it not being asked the average person uh, in Wokingham as there's not many places in Wokingham that you can actually go when it's raining uh, or when the weather is slightly adverse. There's no places that you can go without being either extremely wet or just being in a bad mood because of that, uh, because of the bad weather. And as we are in the UK, uh, we do have terrible weather sometimes. So what will Wokingham Borough Council do to give uh, people a young age, average people, a place to go independently without having to go to places like community centres uh, and things like that. The skate parks are a great start, but there's nowhere you can really go if it starts raining. Thank you for your supplementary. Uh, when it's raining, it's raining, Rio, and uh, there are cafes and, uh, and restaurants which are available to come out of the, the, the weather. But we, I, I've already, uh, listed a number of facilities that we offer to our young children and of course I will be listening to uh, the uh, youth uh, member of the, the, the parliament I'll be sitting down with him to actually consider what else we can offer thank you uh, thank you Mr Elms feel free to disappear or he's gone <laughs> right um, next question is from Kate Benson I believe she's here Uh, hello, good evening. Um, before I ask my question, it's the first time I've been in the chamber outside of a governor training and briefing. So um, it's my first public, public question, so be kind. Um, so my question is based on the amount of opposition from local uh, residents following from the Wokingham Borough Council's public path creation order notices in Jubilee Avenue recently. Um, and also that the public consultation in relation to, to this path creation was in summer 2020 and it wasn't widely known about within the local community. I'd like to ask whether you can reconsider the routing of Greenway Route B through the middle of this land that runs along Jubilee Avenue. Um, and the second part of the question, I believe that the local residents' opposition is actually clear that section 26 of the Highways Act 1980, which is would add convenience or enjoyment to a large section of the public or local residents can't be demonstrated. Please, could you consider adjusting this section of the Greenway so as not to destroy the wildlife habitats within this wildlife corridor from Joel Park to Cantley Park? Please, could you either widen the pavement on the northern side or adapt this section to be signage only, like planned for the, for the Clifton Road section immediately after it? Thank you. Thank you for your question, Kate. Um, uh, the, the consultation, you, you rightly said, between July and September 2020 involved engagement with various stakeholders, including ward members, Walking Town Council, user and interest groups, the, the Mid and West Barks Local Access Forum and other uh, key stakeholders. So it was a very wide consultation. Individuals' letters were sent out uh, to residents near uh, to, to the proposed route, highlighting the scheme and website, and, advert, and the advert, and it also adverts appeared throughout the local newspapers and council's own social media. Uh, prior to this consultation, the council also held an, uh, a consultation in February to March 2019. So uh, that's two consultations, and we are aware of the many concerns that uh, uh, have been raised about the impact of the proposed scheme on the wildlife. Uh, the council has already commissioned and received an independent preliminary ecological appraisal of the area as part of the feasibility design, which did not highlight any concerns with the scheme on the local wildlife. If the route is progressed, we would also engage the same ecologists to be on site at the uh, point of con construction uh, of the route to uh, 
uh, ensure that there is no harm uh, done to the wildlife in the area. And finally, Mr. Mayor, to uh, ensure safety of residents and users uh, of the Greenway, we will be installing a formal crossing point at Milton Road as part of the scheme. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Councillor Bass. Um, do you have a supplementary? And can I ask you to turn the mic off afterwards? Thank you. Um, I, I do. Thank you. Uh, thank you for the response. And actually, that's really good news to hear about the crossing because that was a, a, a danger point, I think. Um, so my question to you is, by creating this path, um, I believe you're actually contradicting what Woking and Borough Council have pledged to do in your own Climate Emergency Action Plan of January 2020. In there, you pledge £170,000, and I quote, to deliver small-scale woodland planting on council estates in existing parks and spaces, parks and spaces. Yet by creating this path, surely by destroying the habitat, you're doing the exact opposite. So how can you justify going against your own climate policy? Thank you. Thank you. Uh, like I've said, uh, um, Kate, uh, uh, the, we did consult the, uh, the preliminary uh, ecological appraisal uh, through the, the experts. And, uh, and I can assure you that there will be no uh, uh, trees removed or uh, at all. Uh, there's no, it's going to be, uh, you know, no, none, we, we won't be destroying anything in, in that, in that, in the one which actually passed because we'll be very, very careful. And, uh, and, and the ecological report says that as well. And uh, unfortunately, I beg to differ with you. With you, we're not actually uh, going against the, the climate emergency. We go, we're actually supporting that, and it'll be a very, very small path, uh, two and a half metres wide, and we will not be destroying any of the trees there. Uh, thank you, Councillor Bath. The final question, and it's good to see you back, uh, Andy Croy. Thank you, Keith. And you said that, that like you meant it, but congratulations, congratulations on your election as mayor. Um, my, my question is, is, is to the leader. Um, the government's plan, John, is a plan to introduce a requirement for photographic identification before allowing uh, people to exercise their right to vote. Um, this will disenfranchise Woking and Borough residents who do not have photo ID. Depending on the forms of ID allowed, about 8% of electors do not have photo ID. I'm sure no member of this council will wish to see voter suppression on this scale or indeed any attempt at voter suppression. Will the leader of the council write to the borough's MPs to express council's opposition to voter suppression and to urge the MPs to speak out against these measures and to vote against the bill when it comes before Parliament. Welcome, Andy. How very nice to see you. The government argues that every ballot matters and that voter ID will protect voters from having their votes stolen. The government argue that vote stealing is not a victimless crime and is this a responsible measure to protect people's vote. A commitment to introduce voter ID for UK parliamentary elections and local elections in England was included in the manifesto in December 2019. The Queen's speech of the 11th of May 2021 confirmed that an electoral integrity bill is to be introduced in the 21-22 session of Parliament. The details of the bill will be published in due course. We don't know what they are, but the government has said a broad range of documents already in use will be accepted. For example, various concessionary travel passes, proof of age standards, uh, scheme, pass cards, photo car parking permits issued as a blue badge. In addition, expired photographic ID will be accepted as long as the photograph is of good enough likeness in a written statement on the 12th of May 2021. Update on preventing electoral fraud. The government has said the latest research it had commissioned found 96% of respondents had suitable ID with a recognisable picture. Voters in Northern Ireland must provide photo ID before receiving a ballot paper. Voter ID requirements were introduced after the 1983 general elections following concerns about the extent of voter fraud. There's been no evidence that ID requirements in Northern Ireland have affected turnout and the allegations of personation. 
the crime of pretending to be someone else when you vote have been eliminated. Since the 2014, the Electoral Commission has recommended that photo ID should be required in the rest of the UK. Pilots were held in England in 2018 and 19. The government declared them a success following their own evaluation of the pilots and committed to introducing a voter ID scheme. The government has said overwhelmingly the majority of people were able to vote and there is no indication that any consistent demographic uh, was adversely affected by the use of voter ID. Of course, we will look carefully when the details of bill are published to ensure, ensure no vote working residents who are entitled to vote are disenfranchised. However, it would not be appropriate for the Council to oppose these proposals unless or until we have had specific detailed concerns about them, which we have yet to get. Uh, thank, thank, thank you, John. I mean, it's, an, it's extraordinary to compare the situation in, in Ireland with the sectarian um, issues they had. I mean, it's, it's just simply not applicable to the rest of the UK. Um, the legislation is addressing a problem, the theft of votes, which doesn't exist. Um, it, it, the aim of the legislation is to make it more difficult for pe people to vote. That will be the theft of the votes. Do you not think that political leadership involves standing up for our democratic process, regardless of the party advantage that may accrue from uh, uh, gerrymandering it? Very prejudicial question which you just asked because you answer your own question. Of course, the council would be against gerrymandering. However, we can't comment on a bill we haven't seen. And as you know, I have been very capable and willing to stand up to central government on things that this council disagrees with and which are not good for the working borough council or residents. Uh, thank you, Councillor Hulsall. Um, Mr. Croy and uh, Ms. Benz Benson, if you do not have to stay, if you wish to leave, it's entirely up to you. Right, so moving on to the next agenda item, petitions. Does, is there any petitions to be handed in? I'm looking on Teams as well, I can't see anybody. Okay, so there's no petitions. We now move on to item nine, which should be fairly straightforward. The returning officers report on the May 2021 election should be very factual. Pages 41 to 44. Do we have a proposer? Thank you, Councillor Hulsell. Um, do we have a seconder? Thank you, Councillor Kaiser. Um, so, proposer, would you like to speak to the report, please? I think the report is self-explanatory um, and I won't take uh, the council's time by reading it out or ex trying to explain it better than it's been explained. So thank you, Ms. Mayor. No. Uh, yes, I, I'd just like to say that um, uh, commenting on, on generally not commenting on the report, but I'd like to comment on the the, the monitoring officer and the, the job he did during the elections and the very difficult circumstances. I think we probably all would agree in the, the chamber it was done fairly uh, and with as little fuss as you could possibly do during the pandemic. Uh, thank you, Councillor Kaiser. Is there anybody else? Councillor Ferris? Yes, I would like to echo the um, a comment there about the uh, monitoring officer and everything else that was done. I think it was probably most difficult election we've had, most complex and stressful elections for all parties, I think. Uh, so I would say thank you for all the work that was done from all our colleagues here. Uh, thank you, Councillor Ferris. Anybody else wishing to speak? Uh, it's Councillor Fruin, isn't it? Thank you. I'd just like to extend those thanks to all the volunteers that uh, sat in the polling stations and stood outside that day, um, especially during the COVID period. Um, I think they should be congratulated as well. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Councillor Fruin. Uh, Councillor Hulsell, do you have a right to reply to the comments? Well, uh, my, my only reply would be to also reiterate the huge amount of work which 
uh, Democratic Services, the returning officer, did for a considerable time, period of time trying to get elections, which when we it was announced that we would be having elections, we didn't think it was possible to do it properly. And we did, and thank you very much. Uh, it was an extraordinary job. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Halsall. So we in, I'm now going to invite the members in the chamber to vote to note the report. Please, all those in favour, make your hands clearly visible, please. Thank you. I believe that's unanimous. So moving on to agenda item 10, uh, the housing strategy 2020 and 2024, pages 45 to 90. Do we have a proposer? Thank you, Councillor Kaiser. Is there a seconder? Councillor Hosel. Uh, uh, Councillor Kaiser, would you like to speak to it, please? Thank you, Mr Mayor. Mr Mayor, I'm happy to be presenting the borough's housing strategy to the full council tonight and recommended that it is adopted. Housing is something which is close to my heart and the fact is everybody should have access to good quality housing as having a home is a human fundamental right and nobody living in the UK should be out without somewhere to live which is safe and warm. This is especially true in a place as affluent as Wokenham. Alas, this is not always the case. And although we talk about lower percentages of homelessness um, in the borough, that to be homeless is a hundred. To be homeless is a hundred percent homeless. And we, as councillors, should do all in our power to help residents avoid having nowhere to live. Access to decent housing has the effects of changing people's lives forever. I am happy and proud to say we've driven the number of homeless down in the borough and we have next to no rough sleepers. Our housing waiting list is low with the numbers of people with real need being matched by the number of affordable homes which we've built over the last few years. We've also developed our housing companies who have delivered affordable homes across the borough and engaged in our most ambitious project to date, a £100 million scheme, which is the delivery of new homes on Gorse Ride. And to top it all, the housing companies have made a profit rather than cost the council money, profits which can be reinvested in services in the council. Good quality homes give residents more than somewhere to live. It creates an environment to bring up and educate children brings stability to their lives and helps avoid poverty. I also wanted to talk about the impact that COVID has had over the last 12 months. And although it's referenced in the paper, it is difficult to ascertain the long-term problems it may leave us with. But rest assured, we are dealing with the short-term issues as they arise. So hopefully no residents, uh, most res residents will avoid any long-term impact. I will continue to work with members from all political parties and the staff of the council to eradicate true homelessness in the borough and look to improve the lifestyle of the most vulnerable. This includes other areas such as expanding council tax discounts where possible. We have no rough sleepers on our streets by choice and it should be beholding on all of us in this chamber to ensure this continues. The policy of the administration is not just to ensure people have somewhere to live, but they should reflect the fact that the people are living in one of the best places to live in the UK. And although people enjoy the benefits and allow people to enjoy the benefits of living in Wokingham to the full, an indication of this council's commitment is that our percentage of housing stock that meets a decent home standard is actually 100%. Poverty and inequality have no place in this borough and we will do all that's possible to eradicate it wherever it's found. Facts and figures are bandied about, showing how well councils cope with housing issues. But as I say, one person homeless is one person too many. As I say, when you're homeless, you're 100% homeless. The politicising of poverty and, dis and, and the despair it brings to those unfortunate enough to fall on hard times does nothing to solve Councillor the problem. Councillor Kaiser, can I ask you to stop, please? I have one more paragraph. No, sorry, please, can you stop? Thank you. Thank you. And can I draw everybody's attention to the three lights um, that, are, that are up here uh, and at the back? You know, when that is red, you do have to stop. I, sorry, Councillor Kaiser. Um, set the second. Councillor Horsall, do you want to speak? I'll reserve my right to speak, Mr Mayor. Thank you, Councillor Horsall. Uh, we've got, uh, I'm just looking, I'm, I'm going to make a list and then I'm going to go to the teams to make a list as well. Um, so we've got one. Okay. 
So I've got one in here and one on Teams at the moment. OK, uh, Councillor Bray, would you like to speak? Uh, thank you, Mr Mayor. Um, the four priorities of the new housing strategy, which are address and understand our housing needs, support our vulnerable residents through a range of housing options, improve the quality, sustainability and management of the borough's homes and enriching people's lives are absolutely fine. The proposals in the strategy should enable the council to at least make some progress on all those fronts and the Lib Dem group is happy to support them. The subheading of the strategy, Right Homes, Right Places, is also a sentiment that the Lib Dem group can support. However, we are far less confident of the Council's ability to deliver it. Firstly, the Lib Dems and Conservatives do not see eye to eye on what Right Homes means. We Lib Dems want truly affordable housing of a decent standard that caters for everyone's needs. The Conservatives locally have supported social housing. But the Conservatives nationally are obsessed with the idea of home ownership, which is beyond the financial reach of many, many people. They should be focusing on providing a roof over everyone's head, not on attracting Tory voters. They should be protecting tenants from unscrupulous landlords. And I have to say the failure to sort out the cladding issues four years after Grenfell is truly disgraceful. But the Conservatives nationally have decided the way to address the systemic problems in housing is to take away the right of local government to have any real say in what sort of developments get built in their area, while chipping away at their ability to provide affordable housing and infrastructure. Getting the right homes is therefore going to be very difficult indeed. And that takes me to the second issue, the right places. The new local plan is stalled. That's because the next step requires the Conservatives locally to say where they're going to put the large numbers of houses wished on us by the Conservatives nationally. They don't want to do it because they know it is going to be unpopular. But the more they delay, the higher the risks of losing control of the situation. The Conservatives are running this council. If they want to have power and all the trappings of power, they have to shoulder their responsibilities. The residents of this borough need to know where the Conservatives are going to put major development. They have stalled long enough. So in summary, the Liberal Democrat group support the aspirations in the housing strategy and we will vote for them. While not being wholly confident, they will be delivered as advertised. Uh, thank you, Councillor Bray. Uh, Councillor Boyd on Teams. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Um, yeah, I would like to thank all the officers and the involved tenants who have been involved in putting together this strategy. Uh, but I'd like to make a few observations, uh, the first of which is about the language and how we describe people. Um, this is an outward facing document and we should not describe those with learning disabilities as learning disabled. And furthermore, we should not reduce those persons to the letters LD. It is demeaning. Please, can we use the term people with health and or disability requirements, which would cover most eventualities? It's a small change and I'd like to see that made. Um, number two point, uh, the breakdown of housing needs shows that those in need of a one bedroom property is far and away the largest cohort. But I don't see any specific reference in the strategy for this group. And I wonder how many affordable one bedroom properties have been built so far or are in the pipeline? And how many more are planned over the life of this plan? Uh, point three, I welcome the fact that we have made it a priority to support residents in the private rental sector. However, I am disappointed to note that the only progress so far on this is to work on establishing a landlord forum, which suggests we are rather supporting landlords. My concern is that good landlords will happily sign up but the rogue landlords who intimidate tenants and do not maintain properties to a decent standard will be conspicuous by their absence. I'm also disappointed that the actions for the coming year do not include holding a meaningful consultation with private rental tenants to find out what sort of issues they are facing with the aim of setting up a tenants forum or a renters union. Uh, final point is that we should also perhaps commit to supporting uh, tenants who live in housing association properties in a similar way, because many of the housing association properties leave a lot to be desired. Thank you. 
Uh, thank you, Councillor Boyd. I'm just going to do another sweep of the chamber and also teams to see if anybody else wishes to speak. Nope. So, um, Councillor Holsell, do you want to um, respond? Yes, um, just take, picking up a few points uh, which have been raised. Um, whilst the Liberal, the, De the Liberal Dems seem to agree with what we're saying, uh, they wish to draw an analogy between the bor borough and central government. This housing policy is a Woking borough housing policy. It is not a central government housing policy. And um, it is ours. And it is very comprehensive. And it does say that we intend to build truly affordable homes of a decent standard, which seems to equate with what the Lib Dems do, want to do. We will, you know, and it's disingenuous to say that you don't know, that our local plan is, is imminent. We should have had a local plan accepted uh, last year with the local plan which we consulted upon was very little pushback. And um, we were unfortunately uh, at the mercy of the Ministry of Defence, which uh, stymied it. We will be publishing the local plan uh, in the very near future. Uh, we, do, we do have to make hard choices. We do have to get a local plan agreed. It is the only way of, uh, of protecting ourselves against speculative development. Thank you very much, Mr. Mayor. Uh, thank you, Councillor Hossel. Councillor Kaiser, you have a right to reply? Yes, thank you, Mr. Mayor. I mean, I, I, I reiterate what has been said by our leader. Um, but I would say, I mean, we have, we have built nearly 1,400 affordable homes over the last three years. And um, uh, Councillor Boy is correct that the profile of the people requiring the homes is changing all the time. But we as a council have a slightly different approach to housing than probably has been fashionable in Westminster for some time. But they're coming around and we're in the forefront of that, Mr. Mayor. We're pushing forward. We realise the only way that you can achieve building 330,000 houses a year, which is what the government plan to do, is for local councils to be involved. Because only local councils know to where to build the right houses in the right place. And I think that's really important. And that is what is driving me, not Conservative policy, but the fact that we need affordable homes in the borough. As I said in my speech, my very long speech, and let me apologise for that, being the first person picked up. But we are very committed to delivering affordable homes in this borough. And I am very aware that one bedroom flats are something that developers do not build. So we will be doing that ourselves. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Councillor Kaiser. So we'll now move to the vote. It's to vote on the adoption of the proposed housing strategy 2020-2024. Please can I see a show of hands and please keep the button high. OK, those against and those abstaining. Thank you, that, that has been carried. So we now move on to agenda item 11. And can I remind um, the leader and exec members, the 10 minutes, the last three minutes will be dictated, I believe, uh, from the traffic light system. Likewise for the leader of the opposition, and I think you've already seen that when it goes red, I will ask you to stop. So, yes, Councillor Hussle. Uh, a question. I can't see the traffic light system, um, either on the right or the left. I think they've been covered up with the screens. So, so, so the, uh, it's something I raised earlier. You have to look, unfortunately, at the back because there's three lights underneath the seat seating arrangement. Okay, I, I know I know it's not the best solution, but it's been like that as long as I've been a councillor and probably as long as others. But your point is well made. Okay, um, so Councillor Hulsell. Thank you, you like Mr. Mayor. 
It's great to be back here, though current circumstances are a little strange. Please accept my apologies as I'm for a few. The elections earlier this month saw the sad departure of several co colleagues, some by design and some result of our sometimes brutal system of democracy. My sympathies and thanks go out to my former executive colleague, Ulla Karin, and the former Labour leader, Andy. While losing can be a tough business, I believe that both will bounce back. Indeed, we've already seen that we can't keep Andy away. Thank you, Charlotte, Diane, Ken, Oliver, Emma, Ian, Richard and Malcolm, particularly Malcolm, for your many years of dedicated service. I warmly welcome the new members of the Council, Sam, Anne, Phil, Rebecca and Jackie on the Conservative side, and to Morag, Ian and Pete on the opposition. It is a pleasure to see Norman and Shahid return. The local elections were a demonstration of our residents' faith in this Conservative administration. Delivered in the past, solid in the pandemic, great plan for the future, stability, experience, professionalism. Our majority has stayed the same, despite the opposition's confident predictions of no overall control. I imagine the flawed but persistent public criticism of our finances was to ensure that on gaining control, the opposition could disingenuously claim that magically the finances had been instantaneously fixed. Good plan. Let me assure you that there is nothing to fix. Our finances are strong, transparent and in rude health. We won a larger share of the vote than any other party and our vote share went up. This is not for a moment grounds for complacency. Our position here as community leaders is a gift from the residents. It is a given on the understanding that we deliver from that for them. Whilst I'm leader of this council, the executive will strive every day to make this borough the greatest, safest and happiest place to live, work and bring up a family. I'm delighted to see that we are not now only the healthiest local authority, but also most prosperous, having for a long time been one of the most desirable places to live. This is despite being the lowest funded. A huge testament to this administration. This is a wonderful borough and we have a great future. We are fortunate to have some of the finest officers and directors led by my energetic, highly professional and innovative chief executive. We have a huge ambitious and detailed programme to deliver for our residents. To paraphrase, I will not make age an issue. I'm not going to exploit for political purposes my opponent's youth and inexperience. Many of the executive team will continue. John, my very valued deputy, finance and housing. Pauline, highways and transport. Wayne, planning and enforcement. Stuart, business and economic development. Parry, environment and leisure. Charles, health, well-being and adult services. Gregor, resident services, communications and admissions. Graham, Graham Howe will step up from his deputy role to become executive member for children's services. Finally, in the new portfolio for uh, neighbourhoods and communities, I've asked Bill to step in onto the executive. For the deputy executive members, Laura, Laura Blumenthal, Equalities, Poverty, the Arts and Climate Change. Shahid, Insight and Change. Michael, the Environment and Communities, Phil, Health, Wellbeing and Adult Services. Our priority is economic and social recovery for our borough. Earlier this year, the executive approved the creation of the employment hub to help people get back to work. As with Schoenfield Studios, we will work with our partners to attract new job opportunities to the borough and are confident in our ability to do so. A key part is the delivery of infrastructure and capital invested investment needed by our towns and villages. A new draft local plan will be brought forward whilst continuing to bring housing targets down to a level that is reasonable for our borough. We were successful in convincing the government to scrap the proposed substantial increase in our housing numbers, and we will go on making our case to get those figures down further. Rather than just complaining about it or digging our heels in refusing to budge, we went to government with strong constructive arguments that their plans did not work. They listened reasonable negotiation, delivering in the residents' interest what any good Conservative Council should do, avoiding the pitfalls experienced by Lim Dem South Oxen. 
Too many young people simply cannot afford to buy here. We cannot discard their ambitions, driving out the bright and the talented because housing is out of their reach. We will get the right housing in the right places, which means addressing the urgent need for more affordable and social housing in the borough. We will be building on our first steps in doing so, doing our part to tackle climate change and making our environment more friendly. We will begin the work of building solar farms in the borough, moving towards our target of making 70% of the borough's waste recyclable and planting 300,000 trees. Securing the best education for our younger generation is vital to ensuring that those less affluent homes are not left behind as we emerge from the pandemic. We will continue to provide the best opportunities for children and young people, opening a new special educational needs school in Winnersh and start laying the groundwork for the new primary schools in Matthews Green and Arborfield. We led the way in embracing the voluntary and health sectors over the last two years. We now wish to do the same with our industry, towns and parishes and the police. We want to make sure that we continue to live in a great, safe and happy borough. Over the course of the next year, we will, draw, we will withdraw from the Public Protection Partnership, bringing these services back under our control and ensuring that they work in the best interest of our residents. We will be taking action to tackle fly tipping, noise, bonfires and other environmental issues which affect the quality of life for our residents. Antisocial behaviour, low level crime and domestic violence is a concern across the borough. We will work with Matthew Barber, our excellent and experienced new police and crime commissioner on creating a coordinated plan for how we can clamp down on these issues, whilst looking to what we can do to help families going through difficulties and provide activities for younger people. We have now high, high standard social homes, very little homelessness and practically no rough sleepers. Being the authority with the lowest level of deprivation, we plan to use the metrics that we must identify families and individuals who need help. Hopefully we'll be able to change lives to become independent and self-sufficient. We must have a coherent programme for po po poverty and equality, which makes us an exemplar of best practice. This year, we'll see the rolling out of our congestion and intelligent traffic schemes, coupled with a, a very high level of road maintenance, which should keep the borough moving whilst minimising the environmental considerations. We will make steps in our journey of giving staff a clear sense of direction and career progression, making the council a place where they are proud to work. This is the start of what is to come. There is much work to be done, but I know that my team and I have the energy to resolve it. It was either Seneca, Seneca or Cicero, I don't know which, who said that if it was not for the elders correcting the mistakes of the young, there would be no state. For more than a year, our lives have been very different. The pandemic has dramatically altered our world and shattered so many people's way of life. We are now starting to see the end. Our government's courageous and ambitious vaccination programme has prevented the deaths of thousands and offers the hope to return to normality. We must accept there is much work to be done to help those who have suffered to get back on their feet. We will reach out to those who are struggling. As a community, we will ingrain the spirit which saw us helping one another, delivering food parcels, volunteering with charities, checking up on an isolated neighbour. Despite everything that we have been through, I believe we have an exciting future to look ahead to. And this is the only the beginning. But lastly, please join me again in a moment's silence for those who have died through this dreadful pandemic in Wokingham, the UK, around the world, and those who have suffered not just the effect of the virus, but the problems which have accompanied it. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Thank you, Councillor Halsall. Uh, Councillor Ferris. Thank you. This last year has been the most difficult many of us have ever encountered in our lives. I would not only like to remember our fellow citizens who have sadly lost their lives to COVID-19, but to those who have been impacted by and remain so by the pandemic. In addition, many local people have had delayed or cancelled hospital appointments and have tragically passed away or are still struggling with their illness. They are the unseen casualties of this pandemic. 
I would like to praise the council officers who have been in the front line in this pandemic, whether in adult social services or helping to get much needed food and medicines to our older people. Many local businesses have received much needed help through grants received from government and those staff in the finance and other departments should also be applauded for their help. Hopefully, we are nearing the end of this pandemic, but we still have to be cautious despite so many having had their vaccines. It is only now that we can start to look to the future and what we can expect from this council. We on the Liberal Democrat side believe there is much to do. One area we would have liked to have addressed is the culture that still unfortunately exists in a number of areas within this council. There are disproportionate, there are disappointingly still areas where there is a view taken that, quote, they, the council, can do no wrong, and how some of our residents have been treated leaves me speechless. Throughout this year, we'll be pressing to change this viewpoint. Finally, as the leader of the only group on working of our council to actually increase its representation, I should like to welcome our three new councillors. Fortunately, one, more now then, is with us in the council chamber, whilst Ian Shenton and Peter Dennis are on the team's connection. I am confident that they will each make a valuable contribution to the work of this council in the years to come. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Many thank you. Uh, thanks, uh, Councillor Ferris. Uh, Anne will now distribute the um, executive uh, members. Thank you. And when she's finished doing that, we will be past eight, should be past 8.30, and I will be proposing to extend the meeting for an extra 30 minutes to try and complete the business. Edward, like to second. Right, wait. Oh, it's a typo right at the beginning. <laughs> Uh, Councillor Ferris, your microphone is still on. Oh, sorry. Thank you. You've got three minutes to wait until 8.30. I don't want to launch into the questions until then. I'm not sure what this counts as, but this piece of paper we've just been given says the executive for the 2018-19 municipal year consists of. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Living in the past, no. Can I can I confirm? Are you saying there is an opportunity to ask questions or not? At the no, uh, the next section agenda item is the questions. Ah, okay. okay. Uh, the question I will have with Anne, the um, what you've just sent out to all members, presumably has the same error in it. So that needs to be present. Thank you. Nearly there. I 
think everyone's back. Yeah. Can I check? If there's 11 exec members. I thought there was a maximum of 10. Yeah. My, my calculation was 11, which included the leader and a deputy leader, but Anne? Oh. Sorry. Another correction. So we are at 8.30 and thank you for your patience. I would like to propose that in accordance with rule 4.2.12 brackets M, close brackets, the meeting continues for a further period not exceeding 30 minutes. I have a seconder. Thank you, Councillor, uh, the Deputy Mayor. Uh, can I have a show of hands? All those in agreement, please, and keep the hands up high as you can to extend. Okay. We'll just wait until Councillor Kerr. We're voting on extending 30 minutes. Four, okay. I think that's unanimous. But just to complete it, uh, can I have your hands down? All those against? and all those abstaining. Thank you, that has carried. So we'll now move into um, agenda item 12, members question time. We have a 30 minute uh, limit, Su supplementaries are allowed. Can I remind everybody on their supplementary questions to not introduce new subject matter, nor make a statement. Um, it needs to be relevant to the answer and again, executive members, you only have two minutes and uh, I will be very strict on that. So the first question is from Teams. Uh, Councillor Shepherd, uh, Rachel shepherd de Bay. can you ask your question, please? What is being done for the Reading Road residents near the Relief Road about exiting their driveways and very limited visibility? <laughs> So, thank you for your question, Rochelle. Um, officers have inspected the site and understand the residents' concerns with regards to the reduced visibility. Whilst the accesses and associated visibility displays are technically acceptable, we understand the visibility is considered to be partially obstructed by the placement of a new lamp column. As part of the normal safety audit process, we will undertake an independent road safety audit and carry out remediation to address any identified problems. Do you have a supplementary? Yes, I do. Uh, will you consider putting a mirror across the road from a lot of these houses like I've seen in other places that have blind driveways so they can better see around the corner uh, or something else that will allow them to exit safely from their driveways? I, I believe there is a problem with mirrors, but I can assure you that we will do everything to make sure that they can exit safely. Uh, thank you, um, Councillor Jorgensen. Uh, so the next question again is from Teams, uh, Councillor Mayor. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, and congratulations on your election. Uh, and my question is actually a supplementary question. Um, uh, my question was asked on the 18th of March about Silverdale Road and the poor state of it between uh, Seven Oaks Road and Allendale Road. Because you ran out of time, I didn't get a chance to ask my supplementary question. So this is my supplementary question. Uh, according to uh, the Working on Borough Council Yearbook 2020-2021, page 52, it shows parishes, details of parishes, town, population, bandy, bandy equivalents, etc. Calculating the proposed bandy tax as shown, the total bandy council tax paid by early uh, householder is about 18% of the total, which is only backed by the 22% paid by householders in Wokingham. Based on this large share of working and tax contributions made by early householders, shouldn't they get better equivalents on roads that need resurfacing for, for their residents, especially for those roads that are near schools, as specifically those that are made early? I also note that the in Wokingham today that the new elected councillor for Wokingham said, and I quote, certainly there's a lot of road repairs need doing and I want to ensure people can get to local schools. So I'm glad that he agrees with me. Thank you. Thank you for your question to hear. 
Um, the council doesn't select roads for maintenance based on the proportion of council tax collected, mm -hmm. but on the condition of the road network throughout the borough. The selection of roads to be included in the annual plan structural maintenance program is based on the UK pavement management system, which includes annual network condition surveys and our own internal design process, including site visits to check the condition survey scores and where required core sampling to establish the scale of intervention recommended. recommended. This is recognised by central government and the wider industry through its code of practice and is the national standard for well-maintained highway infrastructure. This approach ensures the annual structural maintenance programme is based on meeting the highest priority needs on the WBC network within the funding available. The proportion of spend on structural maintenance each year as a result varies, but I have checked in 2019-20, of the structural maintenance budget was spent in early. In addition to the planned structural maintenance, we also spend about a million pound a year on reactive maintenance, and if there is something dangerous that crops up during the year, we will fix it regardless of the cost. Thank you. Do you have a supplementary on your supplementary? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I think that would be OK. Thank you very much. Thank you, Councillor. <laughs> Thanks. Uh, so, uh, Councillor Conway, again on Teams, please ask your question. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, Mr. Mayor, and congratulations again to you. Um, welcome also to everyone in the chamber. Sorry, I can't be with you. Um, my question is to Pauline as executive member for highways. Uh, would, would she agree that the 40 mile an hour speed limit on the stretch of the A321 from the A4 roundabout to the outskirts of Wargrave Village should be reduced to increase the safety of pupils walking to the school. Thank you for your question, Stephen. Um, members will no doubt be aware of increased concerns from all residents about excessive traffic speeds during the period of the COVID lockdown. I certainly got my share of emails and will be therefore be pleased to learn that in response to this, officers undertook a review of all current speed limits on A and B roads in the borough, including the A321 Wargrave Road and indeed the A4 Bath Road. This exercise showed the average vehicle speeds upon which speed limits are determined on the section between the A4 junction and Piggott School are compliant with the current speed limit. That said, the council fully acknowledges that some drivers habitually exceed the speed limit and that police enforcement is the most appropriate intervention for this issue. Thames Valley Police are a key stakeholder in the process to change speed limits, and without their support, any proposals are challenging to progress. In this case, the good levels of compliance and the absence of poor safety record indicate there is not sufficient basis upon which to make a case for a reduced speed limit to Thames Valley Police. As a key strategic A road, the potential for further engineering measures to inhibit speeds on the A321 is limited, without also impacting the use of this road by traffic, rather than the less suitable alternative roads which we wouldn't want to drive traffic onto. However, as part of the emerging intelligent traffic strategy, officers are now able to monitor traffic streets across the network using satellite technology to flag consistent non-compliance, and we'll respond to any deterioration in safety or amenity should this occur on the A321 Wargrave Road. Thank you. Could you supplementary, Councillor Conway? Uh, yes, thank you, Mr Mayor. Uh, thank you for your answer, Pauline. Um, I have to say, though, uh, that as the council wishes to encourage walking and cycling as much as possible, um, I think you would agree that reducing speed limits in sensitive areas such as this uh, would help to achieve a safer environment for both pedestrians and cyclists. And I hope that you will undertake to uh, actually liaise with the police on this matter to try to persuade them to support a reduction in the speed limit in this particular area. Um, thank you, Stephen. Um, yeah, I will take this up with ward members and get their view on it as well. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Imogen shepherd Dubay here in the chamber. Please ask your question. Good evening. Um, while on the most part we all support the Greenways, there's a lot of concern about the proposed Jubilee Avenue section in Embrook. I might add, um, hearing Parry's comments earlier, this section was not part of the original consultation. It's a recent addition. The concerns are about the damage to the historic trees as well as the undergrowth and local wildlife. 
the off-road greenway being put in this location would be so short it has very little to offer cyclists or pedestrians along this already quiet road. However, it just ends at a busy roundabout junction with no real obvious benefit. I have yet to meet a resident who thinks this section along this of the Greenway along Jubilee Avenue is a good idea and good value for money, but it feels like it's just being railroaded through. We do not feel that the consultation, particularly for the Jubilee Avenue section, has been done properly. Residents are confused about what is happening there and are horrified by what it might mean. The first that most knew about this is when they saw the notices about the small section of bridleway that's being established. But there has been nothing to show the full plans for this area and residents want to ask questions. Please can we have a consultation that includes displays and full detailed designs of proper, with proper bi-directional communication? If not, why not? Thank you, uh, Imogene, that's, uh, for your question. A similar question was asked by Kate Benson, but you're right, the, the, the consultations, one in 2019, one in 2020, now more recently, uh, a statutory consultation on the bridleway creation order for a small section of the route along Jubilee Avenue was held between 30th of March and 7th of May this year. This elementary route was a small part of the whole route and related solely to the order itself, rather than a, being a, a wider consultation on the Greenway proposals or the design. This is why the plans and the notices were limited to the area that the bridleway would cover. And I went and had a look by myself and the notices are there uh, explaining everything. In light of the consultation works that have already been taking place, we do not intend to carry out a further uh, consultation. However, we will be preparing a wider response document re replying to all comments and queries raised during the particular statutory consultation and in conjunction with this, we will be carefully considering how to proceed with this stage of the Greenways programme. And we are all, all, all very much aware that uh, people uh, of uh, residents' views about that we're going to be actually, um, uh, you know, uh, destroying the wild, uh, wildlife. But the council has already commissioned and received an independent uh, ecological appraisal as part of the feasibility design, and that doesn't uh, show any concerns on on the wildlife. And to ensure, I've already said that 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 the safety of the residents crossing the road, uh, we're going to be having a, a, a formal crossing uh, point at Milton Road. So um, the consultation has taken place uh, and the notices are there. Councillor we Bath, your time is up. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Imogen Shepty Bay, is there a supplementary? Sure. Um, well, the only consultations I've seen was for the Green Ray as a whole. Um, and originally this route was designated to go down Holt Lane, which would have been far more acceptable than what is currently being proposed. Um, the destruction of the woodland is unlikely to be acceptable, compromised to the, to the residents. Um, and if room for a proper cycleway on the road would be better, but it is a quiet road for cycling and should be treated the same way as Clifton Road with some improvements to the roundabout junction. Um, we feel that it's that residents are very confused by this bridal way. They've got the it hasn't been communicated you, well. Can you please ask your question? Can I ask, is there a better way to communicate this to the residents, like a visual display or something to be put up where they can ask questions? The visual displays are there, uh, Imogen, but I'm very happy uh, that that the, the we will be producing a response document replying to all the, the, the questions that have been raised. And um, so, you know, we, uh, let's wait uh, to, to see that document go out. Uh, thank you. Can I ask Councillor Kerr to ask a question of Pauline Jorgensen, please? Yes. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor, and congratulations. I actually think it's for um, Councillor Bath, though. <laughs> yeah. Um, the absence of a woodland management plan for the council-owned part of Fox, uh, Fox Hill, Woodland in Woos Hill, has been raised in both public and members' questions in the past. While some progress has been made regarding engagement with the community volunteer group friends of Fox Hill, who are finally able to do some conservation works in the woodland, they are not responsible for the management or the health and safety of the woodland. There needs to be a clear management plan for 
there needs to be a clear management plan from this council, similar to what Reading Borough Council have with Clayfield Cops. What is the timescale for developing and publishing the Woodland Management Plan for Fox Hill Woodland, please? Thank you, Sarah. Um, the Fox Hill Woods is managed by Walking Borough Council as a woodland. The trees are managed uh, in accordance with the council's agreed tree inspection policy, which places trees into different risk zones with associated frequency of monitoring activity. Woodland paths, uh, public rights away, are inspected every seven years, and general woodland is monitored on a reactive basis. The council also maintains uh, it as a, a continuous cover forestry whilst at the same time protecting the trees under the Woodland Tree Preservation Order. This category is designed to safeguard a woodland as a whole. The continuous uh, cover forestry approach requires that there are sufficient opportunities for the next generation of new uh, tree seedlings to uh, become established through periodic selective felling and via reduction in the rhododendron cover. Council officers, uh, as you know, uh, have uh, recently met with the Friends of Fox Hill uh, Conservative Group, uh, a conservation group rather, to, uh, to determine what works are required to the site and develop a working plan which will involve stakeholders. It is expected this working plan will be completed by the autumn and the good joint working between the Council and Friends of Fox Hill will continue, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. Do you have a supplementary? Uh, I think so. Um, yes, a working plan versus a management plan, but you also talked about it being reactive. Um, for proper biodiversity, we need to be working proactively in woodlands. Um, you can't just, we've got invasive species in there that need to be removed to allow our natural native species to come through. Why? Are we not committing, like in other woodlands and in other councils, to a proper management plan? What, what is the issue here? No issue whatsoever, Sarah. I've just explained how we've managed that. Um, you know, that there is a, a management uh, management plan, and I've just described it in my first paragraph there for you. And uh, we are continuing to work with the uh, the friends of Fox Hill, uh, uh, you know, and 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 councillor. Um, um, uh, our uh, chairman, uh, uh, Councillor Ross, is also, I believe, uh, helping you along with, with everything that you need. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Burgess, can you um, ask your question, please? Thank you, Mr. Mayor, and congratulations again on your appointment as Mayor. My question is for Councillor Jorgensen. The new cycleway on London Road is not fully segregated, and for long stretches, cyclists share the road with heavy traffic moving at 40 miles an hour with just a single white painted line between them and the passing cars, lorries and buses. Published research has shown that a statistically significant increase in risk associated with an on-road cycle lane and that such painted lines lead to vehicles passing cyclists more closely. In 2019, six cycling commissioners described them as pointless white lines on the road and a waste of public money. The design does not represent best practice for cycleways and due to safety concerns, a build-up of grit from passing traffic and the fact that the cycleway diverts from the road to the shared path and back again, it may in fact put cyclists off. Why hasn't the council implemented a segregated cycleway on the London road? Thank you for your question, Rachel. Um, the LCN 422 cycle route, which you're talking about, was completed in four stages and dates back to 2014. Until July 2020, the layout of this entire scheme along the A329 met our standards and recommended best practice. We need to acknowledge there are sections where cyclists have to share with pedestrians and change from the carriageway to the footway and vice versa, and they're not necessarily ideal and are less likely to encourage new cyclists. Unfortunately, we had to strike a balance between the availability of road space, the need for right turn areas and some sections of the road. The final phase of the scheme is the London Road section, and this was designed in 2018 with various amendments made due to the ongoing consultation with stakeholders and the need to try to establish support for the scheme whilst meeting the original project objectives. Work on site commenced in spring 2020 and so does not comply with the standards that were released a few months later. It does, however, meet both our design standards and national guidance from that time. Our scheme designs are always in line with best practice when reasonably practicable and where not possible due to special constraints will always be compliant with safety regulation and legislation. 
As you will be aware, the Council is now committed to, a meet, to meeting LTN 120 in future projects, and so any further projects, including the forthcoming Active Travel Fund scheme and all the, the LC WIP recommended schemes coming forward in future, will be segregated where appropriate. We got a really good response to the LC WIP consultation. We had more than 3,000 responses to that, and I'm looking forward to being able to implement um, improvements to cycleways as a result of that, that consultation. Uh, do you have a supplementary? I do. Yeah, thank you for your answer and, and your honest acknowledgement that the solution that we do have um, is not ideal. Uh, there, there is possible to put in low cost physical segregation measures um, such as wands or bollards or like low level, um, they're called orcas. Um, so, you know, given that, you, you know, you do see the importance of this quite clearly. Uh, when will the council introduce uh, such low cost physical segregation measures to improve the cycling infrastructure? On the London Road. Rachel, I'm very happy to look at this as part of the LC WIP uh, um, proposals. There are a lot of cycleways in the borough that we could, we could do with improving, and we need to look in, in balance on where we can spend the money best in order to make most benefit for cyclists. Thank you. And we move to the final question from Teams. Councillor Boyd, please. Well, thank you, Mr Mayor. Um, my question is, uh, in March this year, The Guardian published a report revealing a huge disparity in school exclusions between black and mixed race children compared to their white peers. Uh, research by the Runnymede Trust has shown that exclusions have a detrimental impact on children, leaving them vulnerable to exploitation and with diminished life chances. The report revealed that Wokingham had the largest disparity in the country at 12.8% meaning that black and mixed race students at schools in the borough are five times more likely to be excluded than white students. According to The Guardian, WBC declined to comment on the report. I'm just wondering what steps will the council take to ensure that black and mixed race children are treated fairly in our schools? Councillor Howe. Thank you very much for your uh, question, Councillor Boyd, or I'll call you Shirley. Uh, to clarify, the figures used by The Guardian were based on a national data set detailing 445 white British pupils and 53 white and black Caribbean pupils who had fixed exclusions from our schools in one year. That was the year 2018-2019. Since 2018, we've seen a reduction in the proportion of fixed exclusions from these ethnic groups. And whilst this is the case, we are in no way complacent about this, and we will continue to monitor the figures so that we can assess the impact of the steps and that we are taking and take further actions as necessary. We work closely with schools, staff and governors on racial equality issues with specific actions and initiatives. And they include examining potential personal and systemic racial bias with colleagues in children's services and in our schools. The Council's Learning and Achievement Partnership is working with a wide range of stakeholders, including the Reading International Solidarity Centre to develop a racial equality action plan with schools. Furthermore, in reducing exclusions, we're rolling out a therapeutic approach to behavior management in schools with significant commitment from schools in the borough to work in this way and reducing exclusions. This is a long-term program which will take account of the equity and equality and the links with a wider pan Berkshire approach on being trauma-informed. Our education welfare service follows up on exclusions and we have done much positive support and prevention work with schools in recent years to support. Councillor Howe, I'm sorry you've run out of time. Thank you. The next word was reduction. Thank you. Uh, is there a secondary, uh, a supplementary please? Uh, yeah, just just a, just a quick one. Uh, thank you, Councillor Howe, for that. Um, um, I'm gratified to hear that we are working with um, schools uh, at such a, a on such a difficult subject. Um, I understand that the schools are not under any legal obligation to share information about the reasons for exclusion with the local authority. 
and indeed the recording of data differs considerably between schools. Um, there's an action in the Council's Equalities Plan to collaboratively focus on racial equity in schools and the timing set for this action is to begin in January 2022. Um, would you agree that that really isn't soon enough and that perhaps the Council should be working with our schools as a matter of urgency to standardise the recording of the data and gain agreement for that data to be shared? Thank you for that. What I agree with is that we should be working with the schools to understand what the rules and regulations are and that they are adhered to. And right at this point in time, I do not know the precise answer to your question. I will add, um, whilst we've got all of the members listening, that the, we are all responsible for corporate parenting, which includes this sort of activity. And there is a training course at five o'clock online next Wednesday and you're all invited to attend as we all own that responsibility, which is part of this issue. Thank you. Um, we've reached the end of questions. Uh, those who I have uh, cut off, might I suggest you email your full uh, text to the person who is questioning, asking the question, so they can actually hear, see what you were restricted in saying. Thank you very much. Uh, we'll move on to item 13, political balance of the council and allocation and appointment of seats on committees and boards. Uh, reference pages 3 to 18 of the circulated pack, i.e. the pack that came out separately than the agenda. Uh, can I remind members that uh, we are con considering that pack, the revised report and completed appendices 1 and 1A, um, and they have also been uploaded onto the website. So do I have a proposal to move the report, including the updated appendix 1 and 1A? I've got a proposal. Thank you, Councillor Holsall. Do I have a seconder? Thank you, Councillor Kaiser. Uh, Councillor Holsall, would you like to speak to the proposal, please? Are we voting on the uh, whole report on the, uh, the same thing, Mr Mayor? It is the, that report with recommendations 1 to 9. Including Appendix 1? Including Appendix 1 and Appendix 1A. Well, before I um, speak about the report, I have two late changes, uh, additions to the Planning Committee, Pauline Jorgensen and Bill Sohn, instead of Michael Fermager and Abdul Lois. Um, I think the political balance report is reasonably self-explanatory um, and has been uh, allocated in accordance with uh, the rules ar ar around that. So um, I just like to propose it and um, move on. Yes. Sorry, John. Thank you. you re repeat that your names you replaced and you read that your two names. You, you said you're taking yes, Michael and Abdul um, off and you're putting on... Uh, but taking my, my, Michael Fermager and Abdul lawyers off and putting Pauline Jorgensen and Bill Sohn on. On planning. Thank you. So, uh, the seconder, do you wish to reserve your right to speak or do you want to speak now? Uh, I will reserve my right to speak, Mr Mayor. Thank you. Uh, can I have a show of hands that in the chamber? Anybody who wishes to speak? Um, image can I raise a point of order, please? Uh, yes, if you can quote exactly what the uh, um, legal... Can I finish, please? Uh, what the uh, legal statute that has uh, been broken or the constitution that has been broken, please? Yes, well, we think point of order under 421313, point of order. We think it's section 9, appendix A, page 73, and I would like somebody to verify that. Um, but we think that the appointment of Daniel Sargent as chairman of the audit committee, uh, we understand that he is a director of Berrybrook Homes and Wokingham Housing Limited. Um, but uh, we feel that there's a prejudicial interest on the audit committee because it would mean you'd have to declare an interest every time we discussed any of the finances or anything that might relate to those organisations. Uh, thank you for your point of what I need to consult with Democratic Services here. Thank you.
So we've got the uh, ruling from the monitoring officer. Uh, he does not feel that there's any prejudice, but thank you for raising it. So okay, thank you. Right. So uh, who, who would actually, Councillor Burgess, just uh, bear with me. Anybody from Teams? I'm looking, nobody's. So Councillor Burgess, would you like to uh, uh, have the floor? Thank you, Mr Mayor. First, I would like to thank Democratic Services for all the work that's gone into this paper and also into arranging this evening's meeting and others. We've all been forced to meet in person like this, despite COVID still posing a threat and not all councillors having had their vaccination. But I just wanted to thank Democratic Services for all their efforts in making this evening and other meetings as safe as possible. Um, as regards the, the paper itself, I would like to request a separate vote for item five regarding the chairs and vice chairs of committees. It's not right that the second year running, the constitution is due to be suspended on this point. Committee chairs and vice chairs should be elected by the committees themselves at their first meeting. And obviously, while I understand the practical difficulty, difficulties this year, there were no such practical difficulties last year, yet the same thing happened. Railroading conservative choices of chair and vice chair through council for 10 different committees goes against the constitution and does not represent proper democracy that should be afforded to the individual committees themselves. So I would like to request a separate vote on item five, please. Uh, thank you, Councillor Burgess, and uh, that will be accepted. So can we go first to the recommendations one to four and six to nine? I'd like to do, sorry, Councillor Kaiser. Yes, my, my right to reply, I just wanted to hear what um, everybody else had to say, Mr Mayor. Um, for It may not be necessary re to remove Councillor Sergeant, but for um, clarity, uh, we will do that. He will no longer become, he will no longer be directors on those companies. Uh, thank you, Councillor Kaiser, for that uh, reaction. So we're going to vote on recommendations one to four, six to nine. Please put your hands up and make them uh, clear so that we can see it. All those in favour, please put your hands up. And, and six to nine. Right. So that is unanimous, but I still, I'm going to go through the process. All those against and all those abstaining. Thank you very much. So let's move on to agenda item 14. Sorry. Oh, sorry. Apologies. I'm concerned about the time. Uh, uh, recommendation five, uh, which we will now vote separately. All those in favour, please raise your hands. Thank you. You can put your hands down now, please. All those against? Okay, and put your hands down and all those abstaining? Nobody. That has been carried. Thank you very much. Uh, item 14, the appointments to panels and working groups, etc. Appendix T pages 19 to 22 of the circulative pack. That's the separate pack. Um, I would like to for us to agree that the nominations for all appointments on block, if there's only a single nomination, and then we'll do separate uh, votes on the any uh, item where there's more than one nomination. So can we do the first one then? All those which uh, there's a single nomination, please show uh, your hands if you agree. All those please put in, in favour, put their hands up. Uh, it's only one, it's only one person. Okay. Yeah. Uh, all those against? and all those abstaining. So those people have been uh, voted in. So we now go into uh, the ones where there are multiple uh, nominations.
so we'll start at the top. It's the, the first one is the adoption panel where there's one member. Um, I will hand over Susan to carry out the vote on that one, please. Thank you very much, Mr. Mayor. So I will read out uh, the, the nominees in alphabetical order, and then if you can give your vote for uh, the person that you support, so and then I'll read out who will be appointed. So for the adoption panel, first, if you could could say who you support, give your support for David Hare. Susan, and for Jackie Rance. So Jackie Rance is appointed. If I move on to the schools forum, that's one member, and the first uh, nominee is uh, Prue Bray. And the second nominee, Re Rebecca Margetts. And Rebecca Margetts is appointed. If I move on to secure accommodation panel, and the first nominee is David Hare. And the second nominee is John Kaiser. And uh, John Kaiser is appointed. I move on to Thames Valley Police and Crime Panel. And the first nominee is Jim Fruin. And the second nominee is Clive Jones. And the third, Barry Patman. And uh, Barry Patman is appointed. If I move on to the substitute for the Thames Valley Police and Crime Panel, first nominee is Gary Cowan. The second nominee is Jackie Rance. And the third nominee is Imogen Shepherd de Bay. And Jackie Rance is appointed. If I move on to the Wokingham Learning Disability Partnership Board, the first nominee is David Hare. And the second nominee is Graham Howe. And uh, Graham Howe is appointed. Thank you, Susan, for that. So we now move on to item 15, appointments to outside body, appendix three, pages 23 to 27 of the circulated pack. That's the separate pack. Again, where there's only one nomination, I'm going to propose to take those on block, and then we'll do the same process where there's multiple names. Susan will uh, manage the voting. So first of all, on the on block, all those in favour for the single nomination, please show. Can I have your hands down just for transparency? All those against and all those abstaining. Thank you very much. So we now move on and I'll hand again over to Susan to do the next series of uh, appointments. So the first body is the Berkshire 
Healthcare NHS Foundation Trust. And the first nominee is Rachel Burgess. And the uh, second nominee is Jenny Cheng. And the third is nominee is Jim Frowen. And the fourth nom nominee, David Hare. And um, Jenny Cheng is appointed. The next is Citizens Advice Working Gum. The first uh, nominee is uh, Shirley Boyt. And the second nominee is John Kaiser. The third nominee is Sarah Coe. And um, John Kaiser is appointed. The next is Berkshire Maestros. The first nominee is Rachel Burgess. And the uh, second nominee is Sarah Kerr. So Sarah Kerr is appointed. If we move on to the Local Government Association General Assembly members, and there are four uh, appointments that are needed here. So the uh, first nominee is Rachel Burgess. The second is John Holsell. The third is John Kaiser. The fourth, Stuart Munro. And the fifth, Rochelle Shepherd Debay. In, in terms of the appointments, uh, that's um, John Holsall, John Kaiser, Stuart Munro and Rochelle Shepherd debain In terms of the Royal Barks Hospital Foundation Trust Board of Governors, the first nominee is Parry Bar. And the second nominee is Adrian Mather. and Parry Bath is appointed. The Polehampton Charity, first nominee is Stephen Conway. And the second nominee is John Holsall. And John Holsall is appointed. The next is Woodley Town Centre Management Initiative, and that requires two members. First nominee is Shirley Boyt. Second nominee, Jenny Chang. Third nominee, Carl Duran. And the fourth, Bill Soan. And the um, Jenny Chang and Bill Soan are appointed. And finally, Woodley Volunteer Centre. First nominee, Shirley Boyt.
And second nominee, Abdul Lois. And Abdul Lois is appointed. Thank you. That brings us to the end of the agenda. I'd just like to make a few closing comments. Thank you, everyone, for sticking to time and making it easier for me to do the job up here. And I hope this is a sign of things to come. Uh, normally, at this stage, the mayor would invite you in for drinks and nibbles. But as we all know, I can't afford it. No, um, that the that the um, pandemic has caused us an issue. But what I do hope to do is effectively postpone it until the summer. Um, officers don't know about this yet, by the way, uh, to postpone it till the summer so that we can have what we would normally do after this meeting out there in the patio or on the um, patio area in the open air. But uh, watch this space. Councillor Hulsell, you wish to make a comment? Uh, Mr Mayor, can I just uh, give a vote of thanks to Malcolm Richards for a really difficult job in a really difficult year, and I think he did a wonderful job. And if, I, if everybody could agree with me. Can I, can I just add very quickly to that, since I'm now mayor and Malcolm is no longer mayor, might I suggest he goes on my mayor's role of honour for COVID? The meeting is complete. Thank you very much. Oh, sorry. Councillor Fruin. I have to look through about eight panes to see this. Sorry. Um, of bigger hands. Um, just to build on the thank you to the officers for trying to make this as risk-free as we possibly can. There's also a thank you to the members, because by attending tonight, we will put ourselves at risk. And I think that needs to be recognised as well. Um, this pandemic is not over yet. Um, so let's stay safe, everyone, as best we can. Thank you. And if there's no more votes of thanks, I will call the meeting to close at 21.17.